It's Cindy Dole here, Home Wizards, every Saturday, 2 to 4. Hope you're having a good weekend so far. And uh, we love talking about anything that has to do with the home, so you know where you can come. Um, by the way, when you're listening and you miss something, you want to hear it again, just go to the website, cindydole.com. We have all the shows there in the on-air section. And, and if you'd like to call in and join in the conversation, you can at 888-539-2980, 888-539-2980. So we set up this segment with that great show song, of course, from Friends, because when you watch all all those shows, whether it is the reruns of Friends or the newer shows, like I'm still so hooked on Mad Men. We're waiting for the new season to come, but I'm watching it through Netflix, you know, loving all that. Or a movie, I just, I just love seeing the bridesmaids. I mean, when you, when you watch the sets that are in the movie or in the TV show, I mean, there's so much detail and so much attention that goes into that. I thought it'd be fun to talk about how these professionals do it and how it kind of sucks us into the storyline. But then at the same time, you know, we find ourselves looking looking at it and going, whoa, maybe we should have that in our home too. So it's kind of a twofold thing. So with me is a woman who just loves her job, Cynthia Charette. She's a production designer, but also a home designer, an interior designer, yes. and she she juggles both worlds. So great to have you here, Cynthia. Thank you. And you, it's nice you're, to be here. You're smiling ear to ear. You obviously love I your love job. I love what I do. Fun stuff, it's, right? Yes, I love it. So tell everybody about some of the shows that you're working on right now. It's first for TV. Oh, for TV. Okay. Uh, TV, I haven't done uh, anything in the past year on TV. I just finished the, this film that was out this summer called Judy Moody. It's, we see that everywhere on the buses. Oh, I lo and that film was so much fun. It's, you know, there's very successful book series. Yeah. And um, we took that the, the books and created it for film, and we had the most magical uh, creative fun time we did custom wallpapers which will be going on sale oh. we did custom everything we built so many props and sculptures and it's a kids movie uh -huh. and so it was a lot of fun but uh, that doesn't relate so much about what I do with interior design which is right. a much more fun glamorous uh, comfortable uh -huh. feel for interiors. Right. But both worlds, you have a budget to face. You have a budget and you have time constraints. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you're working in film, you definitely, you have a budget and you have a schedule. And sometimes, and this happens a lot also in television, I've worked on television series, where you can get a script and they're late on the script and they deliver it at 5 p.m. and those sets need to be ready in two days or the next day. Mm. And you have to be able to work at that kind of schedule. Wow. Uh, and be very flexible. So, but and, how much how much lead time do you get to know the storyline? Because you've got to be true to the period and to the. You've yes. done some scary movies too, right? Yeah, some West some West Craven, yeah, some West Craven stuff. Wow. I had so much fun on that because what I did when I did the West Craven film is I was like, you know, Wes. What if we, because it was, you know, it was a Freddy Krueger. It was his last one. And I said, what if we... See, I can't imagine talking to Freddy Krueger. You know, Wes. <laughs> I know. I was like, Wes, come yeah. on. Can we just do, instead of putting him in the boiler room, let's do something more interesting. Let's, what if we study history and the concept of evil? And, and it's been around forever. And so I took research and I studied Dante's Inferno and blah, blah, blah. And it, what happens is he loved the idea so much is we were... He rewrote the script to allow us to go into this fantasy world of Dante's Inferno and, you know, to basically stories are stories, concepts, metaphors, everything are true throughout time. Uh -huh. And that's what I wanted to get at. It's uh, to try and give it a little bit more intellect. And there's huge fans. People love that movie. They love Pumpkinhead. They still say to me, you did Pumpkinhead. <laughs> and it's so funny of all so the what, films I've done. So what know? did you do for Pumpkinhead? Pumpkinhead, same thing. I created this sort of, you go into this fantasy world where there's a scene in the movie. Uh, it's a uh, kids go into the woods okay and it's a they're supposed to they're looking for a pumpkin head who's supposedly buried in this um, graveyard and I said you know what if we built this burial mound so the actor has to climb up burial mound like an Indian burial mound and the whole concept of making it very dramatic to get to this scary product that you want to see and that's what we ended up doing which makes it so much more dramatic mm -hmm. and that's what you do in film you you take the words and television also you take the words and you go how can i visually make this more interesting and visually pull the audience in to get the story told 
And one of the things uh, with the Academy, I'm a member of uh, the Academy, and they recently had a um, lecture series on production design. It was very interesting. And one of the things that they talked about was silent films and how silent films really were the production designers, if you think about it, because it's a visual medium. There were no, you know, there's some words you read, but you could without those words, understand the story Uh without a script. Do you see what I'm saying? Sure. And, you know, it goes back to that. And I came from uh, theater design. And so with theater design, you read scripts, you read scripts, stories, whatever. And you, and you, with your imagination, think, how am I going to create this concept? What am I going to do visually to make the audience drawn in. And so for every set or every mm-hmm. design, whether it's a spooky movie or it's a sitcom or what a, you know, a, a love story, whatever, in, in the living room and in the bedroom, I mean, you have to not only make it look like the character belongs mm-hmm. there, right? Yes. But, but maybe also kind of give us some cues as to what could happen Yes. later because it's a little that's bit more that's what we love <laughs> that's what uh, uh my set decorator and i would we just uh bounce back and forth when we're coming up with an art director all of us and we brainstorm and i call it you know if you know what charrette means charrette means a brain you're brainstorming and i was like you know i never knew that but i've been doing that my whole life it's just you you throw ideas back and forth how can we make this uh, story be told and where can we let's put a pencil here and a cup here and that's going to foreshadow what may happen which you see in films uh-huh. the clue that you saw oh why did she leave that book there uh-huh. why is that book open why is the book purple uh-huh. why is it green why is it in leather all every detail that you see on a film is thought of if you're doing your job right yeah right. and that's what's fun is to get down to the the very nth detail to tell tell that story uh-huh. and it you know? has to be so authentic too right i mean it has, it has to be down, to, down to the food like if, it, if yes. it's a kitchen scene the food that they're mm-hmm. eating from that period i mean let's say mad men the tv show Mad Men is a great you know example. i mean it, they're not going to have a certain cereal that we would have now probably mm-hmm. be an older cereal from the 60s or whatever you know it has to have one all of the those best details. examples of that that recently came out was mildred pierce did you see that on hbo no uh Phenomenal, phenomenal production design, costume, everything. Uh, uh, Kate Winslet starred in it. Great, great series. But the food, I was so impressed with. I knew, I was like, man, they have a great production designer. They have a great prop stylist because the food from the 1940s, the plate was correct. The way that, you know, they used to serve. You'd see in those, remember the magazines? Yeah. That you'd see the photo still of, you know, a meatloaf with potato, with peas. The kind of stuff that we don't eat yeah. like that now well the groups but the, just you know, the, the way it uh-huh, looked uh-huh, the food yeah, groups yeah. and i was like i love it <laughs> this person you know they they did it uh-huh. you know and i really appreciate when i see good work i love it so when you, you know? go to a movie or when mm-hmm. you're watching tv at the end of the day you probably look at both um genres in a totally different way right I yes mean, you're probably you have to even... understand what they're yeah what they're doing yes yeah for instance i have a film coming up that i'm going to start working on it's called long time gone and it's based on a book angel angel which is a beautiful book and this is a small independent film that's going to be done in los angeles and but it's a drama and they're going to try and bring a little bit of uh, uh, humor to it. But that's a different way you put on a whole different, you turn the channel, as as compared to when I was working on Judy Moody, which is a very whimsical, lighthearted, fun, joyful thing. This way, for instance, this story is about a woman who, uh, which Meg Ryan's going to star in it, and mm. her uh, husband has left her after 20 years of marriage. And so we open with her in the bedroom, in the bed, you know, and it, she's depressed for a month. So what am I going to do to pull the audience in with that visual? You see, and so I'm already, you, you, you start thinking about what are the colors of the wall? What's, is there a pattern on the wall? What color is the sheet? How is the lamp? Is the lamp on? I mean, these kind of, de- we think about everything. And it isn't just know? about the personality or whatever they're going through in there and that mm-hmm. time period, right? Because she's depressed, but also what's happening in that society. Exactly. Of the time. And you want to also show her life, the 20 years of living. Like they're going to start, there's a scene that starts on the stairway going up with the pictures on the wall of the family, mm-hmm. the nice family, which we've seen. But, you know, we're talking about how can we do that differently. But you have to show a sense of history, why she's so broken and despondent. And then what, where she's going to go from here and to start showing because eventually she will start moving ahead. Life gets better. We have things like, uh, simple things like the grass in the front yard becomes overgrown. Okay, Mm. 
all this stuff that is they are I like to think of it as a painting like if you think of Andrew Wyeth mm -hmm. or someone like that he is my inspiration for this particular film that I'm going to start working on is like just look at the visuals of that that of what that does and you wonder what the story is when you see a painting like that well when we come you back because I mean you're also as an interior designer I mean mm -hmm. do you ever go to the movies and get inspiration for design yes. from seeing other people's set yes. design so we're going to talk uh -huh. about that and and where do you shop for some of these things I'm guessing you cut corners there's got to yes. be some sneaky things you do for TV and film. So don't you go away. We're talking with Cynthia Charette, uh, who is all about brainstorming and being creative as a production designer and interior designer. And we're learning how she does it for Hollywood and how she does it uh, for everyday homes. Uh, Home Wizards is here. The number is 888-539-2980. We're back right after this. Ah, yes, that Hollywood magic, you know, the stuff that is all the details of a great show and a great movie. It's the, it's the stuff that makes the characters in the show look like that's their home. And it makes us want to be in that home. And all of a sudden, we're sucked in. And before you know it, we want to then copy it maybe in our own home. And, and with me is a woman who has so much fun getting to do all this for a number of, of films and TV shows, but also for uh, homeowners who are looking for help because she's also an interior designer as well as a production designer, Cynthia Charette. So thanks Thank for you. sharing some of your secrets. So tell us, where do you shop? Let's say you had to do, well, you're going to be doing this movie for Meg Ryan, mm -hmm. and you had to create this you know, depressing bedroom. Where are you going to shop for that? Do you mm -hmm. find some secretive little places? Yeah, you try your best to find those secretive places. I mean, uh, we know the uh, Rose Bowl and, and flea markets I love. Um, we do look online, but thrift stores are great. You just have to really look through them. But you have to know and the period, you right? You have to know the period, know what you're looking for. This is a middle class uh, East Coast family home. So there will be shapes and forms, you know, on the East Coast, you know, lamps and tables are so, you know, have a sense of history with them and the, and the shape and the form of the leg and whatever that you don't see so much out here uh, in California homes unless you're mixing things, mm -hmm. which I love to do, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So and in terms of then uh, coming up with maybe cut a, cutting a corner, mm -hmm. let's say because you had a tight budget for a TV show or a film, mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. what would be some of the, the sneaky things that you would do to still make it look glamorous or still make it look like that character belong yeah. there? But no, but no one but you knows what you did. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the biggest thing to know about television and uh, especially television and film is you only see it for shorter. You have a moment to make a visual known. So uh, for me, if I'm cutting corners, it's going to be a broad stroke like a color, the color on the wall. And you can do so much with your home just through color. Um, there's so many beautiful, simple wallpapers out there now. Wallpapers are not scary like they used to be. You know, mm -hmm. the overpowering. Those are ways. Uh, a beautiful lamp. Um, there's so much on the Internet that you can find. Um, but the, the most important thing to know about uh, when doing your home is to really be aware of the scale and the proportion. What the mistake that most people make is they buy a chair or a sofa, even though they measure it in the showroom and it still is gonna is too big. And I just had this happen recently. I just finished a office design and I had the install yesterday. Uh -huh. And uh, this client uh, that I had done her house before, uh, she went and did, you know, went to uh, room and board or crate and barrel and just picked out some stuff, ends up, everything would not even fit in the office uh -oh. you know the sofa the two chairs everything it was a it was a room about two chairs and a sofa you could not walk in the room so she called me and she's like can you come over and help me and i'm like girl i'll come help you <laughs> we'll get that stuff out of there and we'll wrap it up <laughs> so we got the stuff out of there and but this was tight too because it was on a budget and it was a lot of hard work and I really care about detail and when you're trying to do stuff on a budget with not a lot you know you, you'll go to um, Crate and Barrel, CB2, West Elm you'll go to all these places but what happens is you got to be careful that you mix it up put a, put a piece of vintage like a vintage antique dresser or a vintage lamp and, and I'm not when I say vintage I don't mean 1940s, 50s, 60s it can be any period something that's going to look good with a modern glass end table and that's how you break the spell of a catalog look 
you know, mm-hmm. and that's what people have to be because we all there's so many great design shows now. We all think we can do it and we look at it and we're learning so much. And it is great. I watch them. Mm-hmm. I love them. Yeah. I watch them all. But and I'll stop and I study and I see what I like about it and what and what went wrong. And, and, and that's what I think the audience can most do is a stop, pause. We all have a remote. Pause the frame. Look at it. When you see something you like, what do you like about that? And it's not just the color and all of that. A lot of times it'll be, oh, look how tall this lamp is and how low the table is with the chair. And all. it's learning how to put that together. Mm-hmm. You know, In terms of design trends that you mm-hmm. probably monitor for your interior design work, mm-hmm. how important are trends in the TV and film design uh, world that you live in when you're um, setting up a... It's um, trends to that period now. Not so much. Uh, your your design for TV and film is driven by the script. Everything okay. is driven by the script. So if the script calls for, oh, it's a she she uh, uh, designer who has a great office. Yeah, you can have fun and do something very glamorous and and of the moment in her office. That's really fun. But but the script is calling for that. Got you know, it. so you be right on par as to what's happening with you know the walls are gray, well, like the, the lamp col- is the col- wide, yeah, the yeah. color of the year. What's you know? happening? Uh-huh. Yellow is big, gray is big. Uh-huh. You know what's happening right now. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. but when you do a period film, you know you do your research and. And you, one of my favorite films is Pride and Prejudice, the one that was done by uh, Joe Wright a few years ago in 2006, the most beautiful period film. It's a beautiful story, but you look at the production design and I could watch it a million times. Yeah, it's just the wallpaper, the period. It's so. Does it make beautiful. you want to live there? And do yes. you, and that, is that how is that how your house looks? Is that no? What, no? My house is a mix. It's definitely a mix. But I'm I love 1940s. Yeah. And the old Hollywood. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm getting ready to have a birthday, a, a very important birthday, and I'm hoping I'm going to have a 1940s party. A Hollywood party thing sounds elegant. and make people dress up. Uh huh. You know, which uh-huh. I think will be fun. Very fun. Yeah, but I love. I wish I was. You know, but of course, I'm a woman production designer. It was different at that time. You know, it was a, as a male oriented business. Sure. I came from, was one of the first production designers in the 80s as a female to come up. And it's great that it's come so far. Uh, uh, but I would have loved to have been alive and been a designer at that period. Who wouldn't? Yeah. When they had musicals and. Uh huh. You know, when filmmaking was just so, I mean, it was a whole studio system and they really cared about every detail. I mean, we still do, but it was a different, different, um, and elegance. You know? Elegance. Yeah. It was all about that. Well, we're yeah. all about jeans, you know, now. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'm, I'm just wondering as we're watching TV and film, how can we learn from the beautiful designs that you do for, for Hollywood and in terms of not only, oh, isn't that neat? It's sucking me into the show. Oh, isn't that neat? I believe that that character li- really lives that way, or I believe that's the, of the period. But in terms of just the style, I mean, everyone talks about Mad Men, how it's just so <sighs> retro and funky. I mean, from the two tulip table to the mushroom lamp mm-hmm. and the all white and I mean there's kind of that style's almost coming back now you know what yeah. can we learn from different shows just to kind of create our own sense of style well I think you in order to learn you have to what speaks to you is the biggest thing because there's so many styles and Mad Men speaks to a lot of people I love that style so when you see it what do you love again what do you love about it pause pause the uh, the picture frame I pause all the time I take photos I study what I'm seeing in that photo because it's hard to catch it yeah. You know, so study that table, that lamp, that ashtray. And you can study find, it, and you can find those things. You can't can you? find it. Yeah, yeah. You can go out and search, and you can you can really learn how to do this. But you have to study and not just quickly glance over it. So really, we can live on our own TV show or movie if we yes, want to. You totally can. <laughs> yes. How fun! Well, your website is. Uh, well, tell them about what uh, your website is. My website is Charette Designs. With dot an com S. with an S, and um, it's currently um having a little glitches today yeah, but yeah. my webmaster is working on it and I would love for you guys to check it out yeah and, and so you're involved with the Academy and in, in addition to interior design and these shows and movies I mean it just goes on and on huh yes yeah yes I love what I do yeah and yeah. so the Meg Ryan movie we'll watch for that anything mm-hmm. else we should watch for to look for the set designs the production designs that Cynthia did hmm not that I can think okay. of right now. No more Wes Craven. No movies. more Wes Craven. I moved on from that. Yeah. Got got into comedy. Been doing a lot of comedy, 
And now I'm hoping to do more drama. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, best of luck to you. It's been fun talking to you. I just I love uh, what you guys do. I mean, it really is an art, and that's why there's an Oscar. Have you won an Oscar? Not Rather? yet. You haven't? Okay, come on. <laughs> come on, everybody. <laughs> because it really, without that and the, and the makeup, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what really, and the hair, I mean, it all uh-huh. just brings you into that moment it takes you takes you away yeah thank you it does yeah, all right well uh, thanks again and, and coming up next saturday uh, we're going to talk more about uh some great things even though it is carmageddon uh, here in the southland we're going to talk about more ways to make the spaces you call home great inside and outside and i hope that when you listen today uh, and you heard some things that inspire you that you'll try them like for instance we were talking with david snow about uh, growing your own veggies from seed i mean we can do this and i loved his idea of using that plastic uh container that you get at the restaurant with your leftovers in it to take that home to punch some drainage holes in the bottom of it and this is where you're going to plant your initial seeds and you're going to put that in a larger tray that will be almost like a little saucer to then put water at the bottom it'll soak it up and you're going to have before you know it um, some nice little sprouts and before you know it, maybe in three months you'll have your own little tomato from seed so fun things you learn all the time here on home wizards so hope you can catch us next saturday from two to four be sure to go to the website cindydole.com have a great Great weekend. Don't do, do, do too much, but do a little bit of something for yourself and for your home. And until next time, remember this, the key's under the mat. Bye-bye.